Hi there, everyone. Welcome to The Daily Gardener. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling. It's the 18th of April. Do you have pet names for your plants? Amy the amaryllis, Jerry the geranium. Once I bought some dahlias at a private plant sale. Before I drove away, I rolled the window down to ask for the seller's name. It was Doris, and they've been my Doris dahlias ever since. So whether they're called Howard or Bertie, Harry or Liz, if you've named your plants, you're not alone. The gesture of honoring a loved one or the little laugh evoked from a cleverly named plant all add to the joy of gardening. And there's nothing wrong with that. Here's today's brevities. On this day in 1855, Paul Dulongpri was born. Known as the King of Flowers, Dulongpri painted exceptional portrayals of roses, which were his first love, and wildflowers, his second. If you look at his work, you'll sometimes find somewhere in his composition his signature accent, a bumblebee. After exhibitions of his work were shown on the East Coast, reviewers praised, no one but a poet could paint as he does. And Du Long Pri has the rare gift of reading down to the heart of his loved flowers. Du Long Pri was raised in northern Paris. His father left the family early on, which was a hurt that Du Long Pri hid from reporters, telling them that his father was dead. After marrying the delightful Josephine Stevenard, Du Long Pri was mentored by Francois Rivois. Following in his footsteps, Du Long Pri's mastery of watercolors are said to rival the richness of oil painting. When Dulongpri lost his savings in a Paris bank crash, he immigrated with his wife and their children to the United States, ultimately calling Hollywood their home in 1900. At the time, Hollywood was brand new, just west of Los Angeles. Dulongpri built a lavish mission revival style villa, and it quickly became the most famous estate on the boulevard. On the property, Dulongpri planted over 4,000 rose bushes, the muses for his work, and he turned the main level of his magnificent home into an art gallery. The place became a sensation, a hub for elites, and a tourist destination with over 8,000 visitors each month. After creating more than 2,000 paintings, Dulongpri died in 1911. Josephine and the girls sold the house and sadly agreed to a final exhibition of Dulongpri's work, which included his masterpiece, The Cherokee Rose. Thirteen years later, the architectural wonder that was the Dulongpri Villa and the lavish gardens that surrounded it were all demolished. And if you look on Google Earth today, you'll see that the land was used to make room for commercial buildings and parking lots. On this day in 1737, Swedish botanist Elsa Beata Bunya was born. She was a pistol. Married to the handsome Swedish Count Sven Bunya, she was a passionate amateur botanist. At her Beata Berga mountain estate, she had many large greenhouses. And she wrote a book called About the Nature of Grapevines, which brought her notoriety and authority. She even corresponded with fellow Swede Carl Linnaeus, who was almost 30 years older than she was. Bunya drew attention because of her way of dressing. Like the women of her time, she wore a skirt, but she distinguished herself by dressing as a man from the waist up. When King Gustav III inquired about a strangely dressed woman at the Royal Swedish Opera, Bunya sent a reply to him. Tell His Majesty that I am the daughter of statesman Fabian Rader and married to statesman Sven Bunya. On this day in 1918, Maryland selected the black-eyed Susan as the state flower. The Baltimore Sun, among many others, was not in favor of the black-eyed Susan selection, and they wrote dismissively about it. Here's an example. Susan came to Maryland, not on the ark or the dove, but a migrant from the Midwest, mixed in clover and hayseed. 
before the plant received its common name, there was a song by John Gay called The Black-Eyed Susan, and it was popular in British maritime novels. The song tells a story, a love story, between Susan and her sweet William. Today, their stories continue. Folklore sharing that Black-Eyed Susans and Sweet William share the same bloom time to celebrate their undying love for each other. Here are a few verses from the song by John Gay. All in the downs the fleet was moored, the streamers waving to the wind. When Black-Eyed Susan came on board, oh, where shall I my true love find? Tell me, ye jovial sailors, tell me true, if my sweet William sails among your crew. William, who high upon the yard, rocked with the billows to and fro, soon as her well-known voice he heard, he sighed and cast his eyes below. The cord glides swiftly through his glowing hands, and quick as lightning on the deck he stands." Oh, Susan, Susan, lovely dear, my vows shall ever true remain. Let me kiss off that falling tear. We only part to meet again. Though battle calls me from thy arms, let not my pretty Susan mourn. Though cannons roar, yet safe from harms, William shall to his dear return. The boatswain gave the dreadful word, the sails their swelling bosoms spread. No longer must she stay aboard. They kissed, she sighed, he hung his head. Today's book recommendation is from Studio O. It's actually a journal that I ran across this past weekend, and it is so pretty. It's a hardcover journal, and it's called The Capture Life Moments Cactus Journal by Studio O. And Studio O offers all of these beautiful collections. They specialize in journals, but they also put together all kinds of decorative home accessories. But I think that their new line of cactus products will be a sure hit with gardeners. Anyway, you can get the link to this product over on the show notes, but you also might come across it in some of your fine gift stores in your area. For today's garden chore, plan how you will honor Arbor Day. Find the best place to source saplings in your area and increase your tree diversity by planting a Kentucky coffee tree. And here's something sweet to end the show today. As you heard, the story of Delongpre is quite enchanting. And there are two images in particular that stuck with me. The first is a quintessentially French image De Longpre is riding his bicycle, pedaling out to the garden, and he's got an easel on his back and a hat on his head, and he's making his way to paint the flowers he loved so much. The second image is a photo of De Longpre in the garden with his little daughter Pauline. I ran across an article in the Overland Monthly that gave a little more context, a glimpse into their relationship. It said, De Longpre's youngest daughter is a bright little miss about eight years old. If you ask for her name, she will say it's Pauline, but the only name she has ever called at home is Juju, the French word for toy or plaything. She is idolized by her famous father, and when he walks in the garden, she is always by his side. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener, and remember... For a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced weekdays in lovely Maple Grove, Minnesota. You can find complete show notes over at thedailygardener.org. And be sure to share the show with your garden friends. You can find The Daily Gardener on all your favorite social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest, and of course, Facebook. While you're over at Facebook, don't forget to join The Daily Gardener community. Just search for these three words, Daily Gardener Community. The group will pop right up and then request to join. Finally, I want to thank my team at Podfly Productions, where my fabulous editor is Eric Begay. Have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.